Okay, so hopefully you got a little bit of in, insight into what was going on in 1994 and how often people were saying the word masturbation all of a sudden um, because of what was going on with Jocelyn Elders. Um, and then hopefully you watched the next one in the playlist, which was a much more modern take on discussing masturbation with children with Uncle Andy giving the talk. Um, and I think, you know, here we are when Weeds aired, it was maybe 14 years after Jocelyn Elders had been fired. We'd made a little bit of headway on the idea of talking about these kinds of things a little bit more openly. Um, a lot of parents are really creeped out about talking to their children about masturbation, though. I mean, if their children touch their genitals at all, p- parents oftentimes are like, I don't know what to do with that. And they really kind of freak out a little bit. Um, and the mom on Weeds didn't want to talk to her son about it. So she got her brother to talk to him. So um, it can be an um, uncomfortable talk because a lot of times parents don't really want to think about their kids as having sexual impulses or anything like that. And so um, it's really more about the parents than it is about their children. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, development and, you know, how to handle these childish kinds of um, issues when we get to the chapter on child and adolescent development. Um, now, if you did the Kinsey survey for, you know, your self-assessment one, you might have um, been a little bit taken aback by the answer to the question about how frequently, um, you know, what percentage of women reported that they never masturbated. And so I thought I'd share with you a, a recently, a reasonably recent poll of Brown University undergraduates that found that on, across everybody, 19% reported, I have never masturbated. So this was among, you know, on average, 18 to 22 year olds who are attending Brown University, 19% said that they've never masturbated. Um, now, you, when you break it down, this is the same study, but they broke it down by demographics. First off, you'll notice that um, never is the lightest gray on the far right. Women, are, the females were much more likely to say never than the males. So that, you know, we're getting that average of 19%, but for females, it's got to be more like, that looks like a third almost of females reporting that they never masturbate. And then maybe like 8% of males reporting that they never masturbate, something like that. So it's definitely, there's a sex difference on, you know, that number of people who say they never masturbate. Um, And then you'll notice also um, when you look at the, it's hard to describe these shades of gray, but the um, the darkest gray that's not black. <laughs> so if you look at the males, that's one to five times a week is that darker gray. And uh, so males most say one to five to one to five times a week, whereas females are pretty much, you know, evenly distributed among um, never less than once a week and then one to five times a week. So very different. And then as the students age, You'll notice that juniors and seniors are much more likely to say that they masturbate one to five times a week than the first years are. So as they age, you're seeing more masturbation. And then, of course, that's not broken down by sex. That's just broken down by um, year in school. And then if you look at varsity athletes versus non-athletes, it looks like the non-athletes are masturbating more. And then, um, and also look at the varsity athletes. You're seeing um, a lot more nevers among the varsity athletes than you do among the non-athletes. And then among heterosexuals versus bisexuals and homosexuals, you see that heterosexuals seem to masturbate less than bisexuals or homosexuals. So some interesting demographic differences among at least this Brown University set of, you know, a thousand respondents. It doesn't necessarily mean that, that this is typical of college students, but it's kind of interesting data. I, what I find the most interesting is the, you know, I have never masturbated rates. Because I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the benefits of masturbation, not to sound like Jocelyn Elders or anything, but there are some great benefits to masturbation. And actually, I kind of sound like Uncle Andy also, because he's right. There are some really good, you know, benefits, health benefits and stuff like that to masturbation. So first off, it's great for sexual self-discovery. And so like a little kid, like, you know, the nephew in that video Um, It is great for him to figure out how his own body works. And um, it's particularly important for girls to discover how their body works. A lot of girls, um, because they report that they've never masturbated, they are sort of dependent on their partner to figure out how to help her to achieve 
orgasm and, you know, sexual pleasure. And that's a lot to put on someone else. Like if, if a person figures out for themselves how their body works, then they're much more likely to have satisfying sexual interactions with other people. For women, it gives relief from menstrual pain um, during orgasm, as you recall from our discussion of sexual responding. Um, during orgasm, the, the uterus contracts. And so it helps to relieve some of the cramping that's occurring in the uterus during menstruation. Um, it gives everybody relief from stress. Your re body releases um, cortisol when we reach orgasm. And so that helps us to combat stress. It's a hormone that, that is devoted to helping reduce our experience of stress. It also lowers our blood pressure. So if you're under a stress that's got your heart rate kind of up or your, or your um, blood pressure up, you know, orgasm can help to relieve that, help to reduce the effects of that. Um, like Uncle Andy said, once you have become a really good solo artist, then you're ready to start doing some duets, right? It enhances sexual interactions with a partner. Um, so it's good to practice. <laughs> it's the safest sex that you can engage in, right? Because they, uh, unless you've got something on your hand, um, you're probably not going to contract a, an STI from it or anything like that. Um, sometimes in a couple, one partner is more interested in sex than the other or wants to have sex more often than the other one wants to. And so, um, you know, the one who has the stronger sex drive can engage in masturbation and their partner doesn't have to, you know, feel guilty or bad that they don't want to have sex with them every time. Um, unfortunately, uh, partners will sometimes feel kind of threatened by the fact that their partner can masturbate and not need them. So it's kind of a weird little power thing that sometimes couples can get in, but it can compensate for a disparity in couples levels of sexual desire. It's used as a um, prescription for a lot of sexual problems that we're going to discuss. Actually, I don't think it's in chapter seven. Sorry, this is a throwback to another book, um, but it will be in the chapter on sec res resolving sexual problems. Um, it also releases sexual tension or frustration, like duh, right? So if a person has sexual tension, it's great to let it out, like release it. And so yeah, it definitely has that very clear cut benefit. All right, so I made a little daisy out of our masturbation benefits. All right. <laughs> so hopefully that's convinced you that there are benefits and it is worthwhile to, um, you know, engage in masturbation sometimes. Like it doesn't have to be everything that you do, but sometimes. So I have this little video loaded up in our playlist and I, uh, they will explain in more detail and some of the, some different things that I didn't even bother bringing up. I'm going to let them explain to you in all the ways that masturbation is good for you.